let's assume we have a function called print user info. It takes a bunch of arguments such as the first name, last name, age, if the user is sunburned, if they like movies, and if they love popcorn. And if you would like to do something with this, and perhaps we just want to print it to the screen, we could provide some implementation that looks like this, that uses string literals and prints it to the screen. Fair enough. Now, if we want to call it, we are going to call it like this. We'll say print user info, and then we have to start providing all of the information, such as Don Felker, and then we have to provide the age, and then we say, does he, is he sunburned? No, he's not sunburned. He loves movies or likes movies, he's true, and he loves popcorn. Of course, why not? So this now, fairly simple, we've covered this before, but now we have these nice little IDE hints in here that say, hey, this is what this argument is, it's is sunburn. Now this is, works great, except until it goes outside of the IDE because IntelliJ and other IDEs that are from IntelliJ and JetBrains do this for us, but once we get online or into another IDE, we don't get the same feature. So let's hop over into another IDE. Okay, we're inside of Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna paste the code in here and you'll notice that we don't get those nice little previews like we see over here. So we have first name, last name, age, sunburned, etc. If we go back to Visual Studio Code, we don't have those values over here. That's a feature of the IntelliJ IDE. So at this point, when we're reading this code, and this will be the case if you're doing, doing a pull request or viewing the source code online through a web browser, you're not gonna understand what this false even means, especially a couple months down the road. You're not gonna understand what true means. True here, we have no idea what print user info is, and most likely, this method is somewhere, perhaps in another file, perhaps further down where I can't see it unless I scroll for it and find it. And it just makes it more difficult and I have to do a lot of context switching to find it. Now, the interesting thing here is that we can fix this inside of Kotlin. We're gonna go back to IntelliJ and what we can do is actually provide the name parameters here. And so I'm gonna type first name. So this is what is known as a named parameter. I'm using the name of the parameter and at the call site, I'm actually providing the name here. So it's sunburned, that was false. And then we could say it likes movies, true, and loves popcorn is true. Now, if I actually, I'm gonna copy and paste this code again, go back to Visual Studio Code, delete this code here and paste it, you'll see we actually get those name parameters over. By default, Kotlin will still compile this code. So back inside of IntelliJ, it will still compile this code right here. And if we were to run it, we would see this as Don Felker's of age 32, sunburn, false likes, movies, true, loves popcorn, true. So these things all run and which is really nice. Now, the other great thing about named parameters is they're also positional based. So let's get rid of this one down here just so you can see what I'm talking about. We get a little squiggly here. It says mixed, mixing named and positioned arguments is not allowed, meaning that we can't, we're using a positional based argument right now. This is a positional based argument. It's the last one here in the, the, list of arguments. I could also undo this and say, hey, uh, let's get rid of the age one here. And I'd get the same thing here and say, hey, this is basically the third item in the our argument list. Kotlin says, I don't know what you're trying to do. You want to use name parameters, but now you're using one that's a positional based. Decide what you want to do, um, but it won't compile. So if you're going to use one name, you need to provide the name for all of them, which is much more readable. Now, because we're using name parameters, I can actually move these around which is very cool. So the print user info method takes a first name, last name, age. Those are the, the parameter order. So in traditional languages that you're used to working with otherwise, you always have to provide the values in that order. However, with Kotlin, you can provide a named argument. So it says, hey, age is 32. Kotlin will know to map this value here over into this age parameter. Now, if I want to move is sunburned up maybe a little bit closer because for whatever reason in my program, it makes more sense. I can do that here and Kotlin will know to map this parameter value, which is second in the list in the positional sense, map it over here because we're using the actual named parameter. So we're using the name parameter to map it over. And that's how you can use name parameters in Kotlin.